Hello people, my name is Nicole, and this is the story of how I was saved from being scammed. Yes, I was going to get scammed by my own husband and mother-in-law. Thankfully, I was able to see through their horrible plan and take my just revenge. I met Kurt when I was reeling from my parents' death. It was a horrible time for me, and he just happened to be the first person who took pity. My parents passed away in a tragic car accident, leaving behind me and my twin sister Sophie. It was very sudden, so we were deeply scarred by the events that followed. My parents were the most important people in my life. Without them, my life felt empty. During this time, Kurt came into my life. We met at a charity event that was hosted in my parents' honour. They were very active members of an organisation that helped underprivileged students with college tuition money. Kurt was one person who had benefited from the organisation. During the event, he came up to me and offered his condolences. I am sorry for your loss, Miss Nicole. I am Kurt. Actually, I am one of the people your parents helped. My family was pretty poor and I was raised by a single mother. It's for your parents that I have come so far. Thank you, Kurt. I am glad they were able to help you out. Surely you deserve this chance. I just wish my parents could hear those words from you. I know this can be a tough time for you. You can reach out to me if you need someone to talk to. I'll be happy to help. We chatted for a while and exchanged numbers. He was a great guy and I wanted to stay connected to him. Kurt and I used to talk to each other very often. He always supported me when I was down and helped me remember my parents in a good way. It was through his support that I was able to recover. I always thought that Kurt was a great guy who cared about me. I was over the moon when he finally confessed his feelings for me. We started dating in no time. Kurt was always very respectful of my parents' memories. He always said, You know, Nicole, your parents were some amazing people. They had so much money, but decided to donate a lot to charity. It was because of them that I had a good job. I will be forever grateful to them. I am very proud of what they have accomplished. I miss them so much. Don't worry, Nicole. I am sure they're happy for you now. You will have me near and can lean on me for any support. Thank you so much, Kurt. I am so glad I found you through them. Kurt was one of those very few people who went with me for my money. My ex-boyfriends used me for money and left me when I refused to fund their lifestyles. Kurt wasn't like that. He worked hard and deserved every bit of success he had. Kurt even paid for all our dates because he wanted to spoil me. In return, I used to give him a lot of gifts that he liked. We were both working in a big company and earned a lot of money. Still, he insisted I move in with him in his rented apartment. Kurt and I dated for about two years before he asked me to marry him. I was super excited and said yes. After he proposed, he took me to meet his mother, Gina. From the first meeting, I liked her a lot. She even complimented me a lot during our conversation. She said, I'm so glad I finally met you. You know, I was waiting to see the girl who has my son charmed. I think he chose well. It was so nice of your parents to help him out. I'm surprised you're not a spoilt girl. My parents taught me well, Gina. I appreciate what I have in life. I also know that money can go any day, so I work hard to earn my living. It's so nice that you can work for fun. People like us always work to feed themselves. You could just relax with your huge inheritance. No one will stop you. I and my parents never wanted that, Gina. Not all people with money are lazy and snobbish. My parents didn't even leave me a huge cash inheritance. I can only access a fully paid for house when I am 25. Wait, so you don't actually have a lot of money? My son said you do spoil him and have a good amount in your bank. I don't know why he said that, Gina. He doesn't know my finances that well. The conversation felt very weird to me. From my previous experiences, I could see that this is a red flag. Kurt was not around when this happened, so I couldn't confront him then. I decided to talk to him later and not make a scene on the spot. When we went back to his place, I asked him what Gina said. Why does your mother think I have lots of money, Kurt? I never told you that. She thinks I have a lot of money in my bank. Well, you do have a lot of money, don't you? Of course not, Kurt. My inheritance is actually only a house, and I can't access it till I am 25. We never talked about these things, so why did you lie to your mum? It was a simple assumption, Nicole. Anyone would think you have lots of money. I mean, look at your parents. My parents gave most of their wealth to charity. Also, I didn't like the way your mum spoke to me. It was very disrespectful. You are overreacting. It was just a harmless assumption. Kurt simply went on a rant about how I was overreacting, and it's normal to assume these things. Still, it didn't sit well with me at all. However, I decided to let it go. I was, after all, very much in love with him. 
Besides, he had never been disrespectful towards me at all, so for his sake I decided to look the other way. I wish I wasn't so naive back then. Both I and Kurt decided to have a small wedding with close friends and family. Most of his family lived out of state and couldn't fly in for the wedding. I was a little sad since I was excited to meet them. I later learnt that he didn't invite them at all. Instead he said they weren't close enough to get an invitation. From his side only his mother and a few friends were present. I had a lot of my family coming for the wedding. Due to my big guest list I paid for most of the wedding. I thought it was fair, given he didn't have a lot of people attend. Everything was going well until my sister decided to talk to me. She said, Sis, are you sure you want to go through with this wedding? Kurt and his mum don't seem to be very nice. What do you mean, Sophie? Kurt's mum can be a bit much, but he is a great guy. I didn't tell you sooner, but I heard them talking shit about you. I've no way to prove it, but wanted to tell you anyway. Are you sure he is not with you for money? He knows I just have small savings from my job. Kurt also knows about the inheritance I will get. Don't worry, it was probably a misunderstanding. Kurt is better than that. I trust your judgement, Nicole, but still, I think you should be a little careful. Again, Sophie's words kept bothering me. I was taken back to the time Gina talked about my inheritance. I was pretty confused about the whole situation. However, Kurt had never shown signs of being a gold digger. I already lived with him for two years and thought I knew better. If only I had cancelled the wedding then, I wouldn't have had to see the dark side of Kurt. Anyway, the wedding was beautiful and I felt like my dreams were coming true. I couldn't be any happier. I naively thought that my best days are about to come. Sadly, I was very wrong about that. After the wedding, we moved in with his mum. Turns out the house was in his name and his mother was living there rent free. Kurt had a decent income so this wasn't a big problem. The house was small, but we made it work. Still, I realised that we need a bigger house when we have kids. One day I had a very unpleasant conversation with him about this. I said, Kurt, I didn't know this house was yours. Yes, it was my dad's house, but I got it after he died. It is my inheritance. Mum just got some money, so I wanted her to live here as long as she wanted. This is her house too, even if it's not in her name. Oh, I see. You know, she can continue staying here by herself. We can get a new house when we have kids. They will need a little more space. Don't worry, we can just stay at your house. I'm sure the house set for your inheritance will be huge. You won't need it for yourself. I'll sell this house and we can all just live there. You'll put me on the deed as well and it will be our house. I'm not sure what I want to do with the house, Kurt. We will keep it, honey. It's that simple. No matter what I said, Kurt kept pressuring me to put the house in his name as well. While I didn't mind him living in my house, putting his name on the deed was a little too much. He never talked about splitting his house with me. Whenever he referred to my inheritance, Kurt said it was our house. I was getting extremely worried about his motives and decided to drop the conversation. I had a year before I turned 25, so I decided to see how things turn out by then. Kurt was the usual loving partner throughout this year. His mum Gina, however, was far from warm. She was often jealous of me and even made snide remarks about my upbringing. It was starting to get on my nerves. However, I never insulted her back. I thought things will get better once we move without her. A month before I turned 25, I received shocking news from Kurt. When I got home from work, he was waiting for me in the living room. Gina was also present there. He said, Nicole, I wanted to tell you something. What is it, Kurt? You're scaring me. I quit my job. The work environment was really bad. It was starting to affect my mental health. I think I will have a break for now. I handed in my notice a month back. Today was my last working day. What? When did you decide that? You should have told me about this before making a decision. Why are you attacking my son? He said he was having a rough time. You have to be supportive of him. It's your job to take care of his expenses now. You have enough money to do it anyway. That's not the point, Gina. He never told me about his problems. It's rude to make unanimous decisions in a marriage. Well, he discussed it with me and I approved. I am his mother. My word is enough for this household. This is not your father's property. Only I make the final decisions here. Now stop being selfish and apologise for your rudeness. I couldn't believe what I was told. Kurt also looked very upset and told me he didn't like my reaction. He berated me for not caring for him enough. I felt bad and apologised to him. I also assured him that I would support him as long as he needed. He was back to his usual self, but my doubts were slowly creeping in. I could see red flags all around me. It all came to a head a few days later. 
A few days before I turned 25, I decided to surprise Kurt with a dinner date. I'd gotten a promotion at work and wanted to celebrate it with him. When I walked through the door, I heard Kurt and his mother discussing something. They hadn't heard me enter the house, so they continued their conversation without noticing me. What I heard made my blood run cold. They said, Nicole is so stupid she can't even think properly. I mean, what the hell would I marry someone so ugly like her? She thinks I love her or something. I must tell you, I almost scolded you when she said she doesn't have much money. I thought you were being dumb and landed a broke girl. Nah, I knew a girl like her would have money. If her inheritance wasn't tied to the house, I would have divorced her sooner. Don't worry, the time is near. Her birthday is just a few days away. We'll get our brand new house soon. I can't wait to dump this rotten place. Don't worry, Mum. Once she has the house, I'll put my name on it. Then I can divorce her and get half the house. We can sell the share and get a new place. That stupid girl deserves to lose the house. Yeah, good things her still parents died early. Wish they weren't such wannabes and left her more money. They just wanted to show off their wealth to the rest of the world. Her parents were as useless as her. Even her sister is ugly as hell. Who would want them without their money? They kept laughing and talking shit about us. I was starting to panic. All those words were stabbing me in the chest. I knew I couldn't cry. I didn't want them to see me vulnerable. I was better than that, so as quietly as possible, I exited the house and left. I went straight to my sister Sophie. I broke down on her couch and said, You were right, Sophie. Kurt is after my money. I can't believe the things I heard him say. He wants half of my house, Sophie. He will divorce me after that. No way. I won't let that happen. He will have none of your money. God, Nicole, he even left his job so he can get alimony from you. He is such a cruel man. Even his mum supported his evil plans. I can't believe I was so naive. But it's time I show them who they messed with. I have the perfect plan in mind. I will need your help. Tell me. I will do anything for my sister. So I told her my perfect plan, but to execute it I needed time. I went home and resumed my normal routine and never let them know I heard their conversation. Kurt was also being extra nice to me and even arranged a big party for my birthday. I guess he wanted to spend as much money before divorcing me. I enjoyed the party because I knew I would have the last laugh. After a few days, Kurt kept pestering me about adding him to the house deed. I assured him that I will do it soon. Meanwhile, I was bidding time and preparing the divorce papers. When they were finally ready, I met with my property manager and signed over the house to my sister. There was no way Kurt was getting the house from me. With that being done, it was time to confront them. One evening, I simply walked into the house and told them to come for a talk. We sat down and the two looked a little bit confused. When I mentioned it was about the house, their mood instantly lifted. But things were going to change soon. I sat down and said, Hey guys, so there's an important discussion that needs to happen. You know I was set to inherit a house? Well, I signed it over to my sister a few days back. What? Who gave you permission to do that? Your sister literally scammed you out of the house. Are you insane? You need to make this right, Nicole. This is so unfair. What's unfair, Gina? The fact that I spoiled your plans to get my inheritance? I know what you two have been up to. What, what are you saying? You know I will never do that. Your sister is putting ideas in your head. She's the villain here. Yes, yes, let's not jump to conclusions right now. Stop it, you two. I was the one who heard the conversation. I know you guys have been planning this for a while, but guess what? Your plan won't work. And here are the divorce papers. I'm moving out today. You can contact my lawyer for more information. No, no, you can't do that. We have sold this house for you. We were counting on moving in with you. I wasn't going to divorce you, Nicole. Nicole, please listen to me. You cannot leave us like this. We've been counting on you. Where will we go? You should have worried about that before planning to betray me. It's time you both enjoy your just desserts. I'll see you in court. The two kept crying and begging me to change my mind. However, I was done with them. I simply turned around and left. That didn't stop them from trying to contact me. I was away enjoying a nice vacation with my sister in Hawaii. All the while, Kurt and Gina alternated from cursing me to begging for help. From my lawyer, I learnt that Kurt and Gina had sold the house just after they got my inheritance. They were planning to keep it a secret from me. Their plan was to move into the house and spend their inheritance before I could find out. Sadly, I got to them before they could further their plans. I was pretty furious and asked my lawyer to go nuclear. He did just that. Kurt had to spend a lot of money on a good lawyer. Most of the money from the house went to that. Whatever was left was split into half and one part was given to me. He got nothing from me in return. 
The judge saw that he had the qualifications to get a job, so he refused to grant alimony. Also, he berated Kurt for being so malicious and even shamed Gina for raising him that way. Even after the divorce was finalized, Kurt kept begging me to take him back. He no longer had the means to purchase a trailer, let alone a house. Gina was refusing to go to work and he couldn't find a good one. You see, since I know a lot of people, word spread fast about my divorce. Everyone was disgusted with them and no one wanted to offer him a job. He had to move to a more expensive city and live in his car with his mum. I, on the other hand, am doing great. The promotion at work got me into a good position with great pay. Sophie also transferred the house back to me. Sure, it did take me some money, but Kurt's inheritance money from the house took care of it. In the end, I was free from a manipulative and low-life husband while getting my best life. I've started to date and one guy has really caught my attention. I'm not sure what will come out of this, but I am wiser than I ever was.